heading for today is the natural base E less than 8.4 and be sure and include today's date. All right, be sure and include today's date. All right, the natural base E less than 8.4 and be sure and include today's date. Let's start off by talking about what E stands for, okay? First, E is really called the number E, or it's also called the natural base E, even though it's a letter, okay? <clears throat> so even though E is a letter, we call it the number E or the natural base E. Now you take notes on this however you want to, but you need to know what this is called, all right? If for no other reason, so you look intelligent in higher level math classes. In a way, E is like pi, okay? Just like just like pi represents a number, so does the letter E, okay? And also, you guys should know how pi goes on and on and on without repeating, without terminating. Well, E does the exact same thing, okay? And if you're curious what the number is for E and also where it comes from, I will show you all of that in a couple minutes. But first of all, understand, E is a number, just like pi is a number. All right, all right, let's continue on. There is what E is, of course, it goes on and on and on, but um, there it is if you want to write that down. And no, you do not need to memorize this number. It is on your calculator, and I will show you where it is later. Just like pi is also on your calculator, all right? Now, let me quickly show you where we get the value of E from, okay? Let me show you quickly where that comes from. First of all, you can find this information at the top of page 420 if you care to follow along, okay? You don't have to, but you can if you want to. The man who discovered the number is called um, Euler. That's how you pronounce his last name, Euler. And sometimes you hear something called the Euler numbers, okay? Now this guy, um, there's a story behind how this happened, I forget the story, but he's the guy that discovered this, and here's what he did. It's right there again at the top of page 420. In a blue box, he took one over zero factorial, and then one over one factorial, and then one over two factorial, and then one over three factorial, and then one over four factorial, okay? And he continued on, and he added, actually, that's not correct, and I, I knew that, I apologize. I wasn't even thinking. Um, he did one over, um, he continued on and on up until, um, he did not stop, by the way, at five factorial like the book shows. Um, but just for illustration point, the book stops there, and he added these up. Now, I don't know if you guys know what factorial means. Let me show you. One factorial means one. Two factorial means two times one. Three factorial means three times two times one. Four factorial means four times three times two times one. Five factorial means five times four times three times two times one. Okay? And so that's where they're getting those denominators. Um, and if you'll look, let me get rid of these real quick. You don't have to know this. I'm just trying to quickly show you. Um, based on on a definition, um, just like um, anything over zero is undefined, well, one over zero factorial is defined as one. Of course, one factorial is one, one over one is one. Two factorial is two, two times one, so one half. Three factorial is six, three times two times one, so one sixth. Four factorial would be um, 24, because we have four times three times two times one, and five factorial would be 120 because we have five times four times three times two times one. And you can continue on and on. And as you continue on and on, um, you'll see that this number here is formed. Of course, you can go on and on, but it gives you an idea of where the number E comes from, okay? You don't need to know that, but I just want to show you that. Next, I need to show you where the E button is on your calculator, okay? So, um, if you'll get out your calculators, please. <clears throat> um, if you have a graphing calculator, I would like you to look on the left column right here. The um, third button from the bottom, one, two, three, has an LN button like this. Everybody 
see that. And above that, you'll see an E to the X. So if you want to, um, if you want to access the E button on your calculator, you're going to hit the second button up top here. Second, and then, and then the natural log button. That's what LN stands for. And we're going to talk about that later on um, in another video. But um, you hit the second button, then the LN button, and on your screen will pop up um, E arrow parentheses. We're going to talk about that in a second, okay? But does everybody see where this is? You really need to pause the video and find the E button on your calculator, okay? So if you hit second and then LN on your screen, this should pop up. E arrow and the parentheses. Now some of the newer TI graphers might not have this exactly, but it'll be similar, okay? <clears throat> so pause the video, find your E button. Once you've found it, let's move on. Having done that, let's practice typing some problems into your calculator, okay? So here we go. Let's type these four problems into our calculator. The first one is e to the third power, okay? So what I want you to hit is on your screen. <clears throat> I want you to hit the shift and the LN button, whatever button on your calculator is the E button, and this will pop up. And then type in three. And then close the parentheses and hit enter. All right. If you do that, you're going to get 20.086 if you round that. If you're not getting that, you need to try again or get some help or contact me, okay? Now for the next problem here, it's so easy. You simply type four because there's a four here. Then hit second natural log or LN, natural LN, and this will pop up. And then type in five because five's your power. And then close the parentheses and hit enter. All right. If you do that correctly, I'm doing it right now, you will get, let's see, four e to the fifth power, you will get 593. 593.65 if you round that. Are you okay? This okay. It's not hard, but it's necessary. All right. So on your screen now, um, let's type in this problem. So the first thing you would type is negative 3, by the way. Don't use the minus button. Use the negative button. And then 3. Then hit Shift, LN, and this will pop up. And then type in 0 .35. 0 .35. All right, let me get my calculator out here. Negative 3, uh, Shift, LN, and then 0 .35. And then close the parentheses. And you will get... Negative 4.26. Negative 4.26. There we go. Okay. One more. I hope I'm not going too fast. I hope you're getting this. With your calculator, type in negative 10. Then shift L in and this will pop up. And then negative 2.23. And then close the parentheses. Okay. Now, let me type that in my calculator real quick here and see what I get. Um, negative 10 e to the negative 2.23 power, and you will get negative 1.0753 if you round it to four places. Now I'd like to show you one more thing. Remember I told you the um. Remember I told you the e value is this number right here. Well, let's take e to the one power and see what we get. Okay. So with your calculator right now, I want you to hit Shift, and then LN, and then this will pop up like this. And then type in 1, and hit Enter. Now if you do that, that means you're taking E to the 1 power. And of course, E to the 1 power is just E. So hit Enter, and look what you get. Just about the same thing I have here, a little bit of a difference. 2.718281. 8, um, it might be exactly right, actually, 7, 1, 8, 2, 8, 1, yeah, 8, 2, 8. So this is what my calculator has, it has this right here. Okay, so taking E to the 1 power gives you this. Alright, so guys, make sure you're grasping this. Make sure you understand that E is a number, just like pi is. Make sure you understand how to type these problems into your calculators, okay? That's really, really important. Now, let's wrap things up by doing looking at was that by looking at two kinds of problems okay problems where we 
simplify base expressions and problems where we graph exponential functions with the base of e. So we're going to look at simplifying and graphing. Okay, so here we go. First, the simplifying problems. Um, please write these three problems down. Please copy those three problems down. Now, really, um, if you want to type this into your calculators or get a number, you could. But on a test or a quiz or in your homework, we do not want you to do that. I want you to leave it in a base E. So really, these are pretty simple. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, okay? Here, we're multiplying like bases, correct? E and E. So you've learned when you're multiplying like bases, write the like base once and add your exponents. Boom, booyah, done, finished. That's it. Nothing difficult there, okay? All right, let's continue on. Let's simplify this. Well, first of all, let's put a fraction bar. We have six and two. Those can be reduced. Two goes into both of those. And then next, you've learned that when you're dividing like bases, you write the like base up top, and you take the top minus the bottom. So two minus one is one. Now you do not need to put this one if you don't want to. And you do not need to put this one if you don't want to. So this is a fine answer, but this is also a fine answer. Are you getting this okay, guys? This is just like the stuff we did probably weeks ago where we had uh, multiplying like bases and dividing like bases, okay? Nothing's changed except that our base now is E, but it's still a like base, so it doesn't matter, okay? All right, let's come over here. Now, we have one term inside the parentheses, so we know we can take this two and multiply it through. Please don't forget you have a one right here, okay? So two times one is two. So we have 2 to the second power. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so e to the negative 2 power. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Remember, when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponents times each other as long as you have one term here, and we do have one term right here. Now, we never want negative exponents in our answer. So... Let's put all of this over what? One, correct. And let's move this down to the bottom. If you move to E to the bottom, the negative two becomes a positive two. Does everybody see that? We've learned how to do that, okay? Remember, you can move exponents and their bases as long as we have one term and one term, and we do. So, it now becomes E squared. So my final answer is four, right? 2 squared, 2 times 2, 4, over e to the second power. If you want to put the 1 right here, you're welcome to. You don't have to. All right? And that's it. That's all I want you to do. Now, you're going to have some tougher problems than this in your homework. But the idea is still the same. You're simply simplifying um, base e expressions. Not that difficult, okay? And you'll get more practice in your homework. Now, lastly, moving on, we're going to graph an exponential function, okay? Um, and notice it has a base of e, which is no big deal. Absolutely no big deal, okay? Um, we learned how to graph exponential functions. My goodness, I think it was the first lesson. Let me look back and see. Yep, lesson 8.1. We learned how to graph exponential functions. Well, Mr. Earhart, are they done the same way? Of course they are. Who cares what your base is? You still have an exponential function. E is a number. So we've done these already. But in case you've forgotten, I will still go over it again, okay? Here we go. <clears throat> First of all, I forget the exact order of the steps, but basically speaking, you take the exponent, set it equal to zero, and solve. Your exponent is x minus 1 bring the 1 over, make it positive, and that's your middle value on a 5 value table of values. Pretty simple. Now we go up to 2 and 3, and we go down to 0 and negative 1. That's easy, isn't it? Sure it is. Now, let's make some substitutions. Okay, here we go. So with your calculator, I would type, and I'll listen to it, I'm going to help you here, okay? With your calculator, I would type parentheses 
4 divided by 3. If you don't put this in parentheses, your calculator is going to think this is going to be 4 divided by 3. Um, and then times E, you need to really make sure you put this in parentheses, okay? Pulling the whole fraction together. So 4 thirds, then hit. Um, then hit a uh, second LN, and this will pop up. See the curve taking place there. 
there's your exponential graph right there. And that's all there is to it, guys. It's no different than any other exponential functions you've graphed, except your base is an E, which really doesn't matter because that's a number anyways. Now, real quick, and I'm done. If you wanted to type this whole thing into your calculator and then use the table of values, that's fine. You would go to your Y equals and then hit parentheses, 4 divided by 3, then hit your um, shift L in and this would pop up. Then type X minus 1, close the parentheses, then put plus 1. And now go to your table of values. And your table of values should match this exactly. Okay, guys, we should know how to do these. Um, watch it again if you need to, but I want you to know how to graph these exponential functions with a base E. It's been a pretty short video, guys, not that long. Now, hopefully you students are understanding this lesson. We're going to be using the number E as a base of logarithms in lesson 8.5. So logarithm base E of 8 or something like that. We'll get into that in lesson 8.5, okay? So make sure you're understanding this. If you have any questions, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.